Number one, then, the origin of the universe. One of the main doctrines of the Christian faith is that God created the universe out of nothing uh, a finite time ago. The Bible begins with the words, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible thus teaches that the universe had a beginning. This doctrine was repudiated both by ancient Greek philosophy as well as modern atheism. And then in 1929, the discovery of the expansion of the universe dramatically verified this doctrine. As you trace the expansion back in time, all the galaxies in outer space get closer and closer and closer together until finally the entire universe was shrunk down to a state of infinite density called the singularity about 14 billion years ago. Nothing existed prior to the singularity. It represents the origin of the universe, not only of all matter and energy, but even of physical space and time themselves. Physicists John Barrow and Frank Tipler explain, at this singularity, space and time came into existence. Literally nothing existed before the singularity. So if the universe originated at such a singularity, we would truly have a creation ex nihilo, that is out of nothing. Against all expectation, Science thus verified this biblical prediction. Robert Jastrow, the head of NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies, envisions it this way. The scientist has scaled the mountains of ignorance. He is about to conquer the highest peak. And as he pulls himself over the final rock, he is greeted by a band of theologians who have been sitting there for centuries. Well, as you can imagine, scientists explored various ways to try to avert the beginning of the universe and to regain an eternal universe. Some suggested an oscillating model in which the universe goes through an infinite series of expansions and contractions, one after another from eternity past. Others speculated that our universe might have been a fluctuation in a prior vacuum state of fluctuating energy. Still others, like Stephen Hawking, tried to avoid a beginning by suggesting a theory of quantum gravity. But none of these efforts succeeded in restoring an eternal universe. Instead, 20th century cosmology saw a parade of failed theories trying to avert the absolute beginning predicted by the standard Big Bang model. Although advances in uh, astrophysical cosmology have required various revisions to the standard model, nothing has called into question its fundamental prediction of a beginning of the universe. J.M. Wersinger, who is professor of physics at Auburn University, wrote, at first, the scientific community was very reluctant to accept the idea of a birth of the universe. Not only did the Big Bang model seem to give in to the Judeo-Christian idea of a beginning of the world, but it also seemed to call for an act of supernatural creation. It took time, observational evidence, and careful verification of predictions made by the Big Bang model to convince the scientific community to accept the idea of a cosmic genesis. The Big Bang is a very successful model that imposed itself on a reluctant scientific community. The Big Bang theory thus agrees with the Bible's doctrine of creation. Now, this can have life-changing implications. For example, when Jan and I were studying in Germany, 
we met a scientist named Eva Drescher. Eva Drescher was a prominent Polish physicist, even had a sound wave named after her. And one day, the conversation turned to the subject of God. And Eva said to Jan and me, physics has destroyed my belief in God. As I look out at the universe, all I see is darkness. And as I look in at my own heart, all I see is darkness. And I thought, wow, what a poignant description of the human predicament, darkness without and darkness within. Well, at that point, Jan said, well, you should read Bill's doctoral dissertation. He uses physics to prove the existence of God. And Ava said she was interested in reading it. So we gave her my doctoral dissertation, which had not yet been published. And over the next few days, she became increasingly excited as she read it. She said, I know these men that you're quoting. I'm, these are colleagues and scientists. When she finally got to the end of the dissertation, she gave it back to us and said, thank you for restoring my belief in God. I do believe in God after all. And we said to her, well, would you like to know him personally? And she said, of course. And so we made an appointment to meet her for dinner that night at a restaurant. And meanwhile, that afternoon, Jan and I made from memory a handmade four spiritual laws to share with Ava. And after dinner that evening, we opened it up and began, just as there are physical laws that govern the physical universe, so there are spiritual laws that govern your relationship with God. And she said, why? Physical laws, spiritual laws, this is just for me. And by the time we got to the end of the booklet where it shows the two circles, one with Christ in the life and one with Christ outside the life, and we asked her, which circle best represents your life? She clapped her hand over the diagram and said, oh, this is so personal. I cannot answer now. And we said, that's fine. Let us just explain to you how you can give your life to Christ should you want to later on. And we went through a prayer of invitation with her, and then we went home that evening. Well, the next day we saw Ava again, and she was radiant with joy. And she told us how she had gone home that night, knelt down by her bed, and prayed to commit her life to Christ. And she flushed all of the wine and the tranquilizers that she was on down the toilet. She was a transformed person. Well, Jan and I uh, knew she'd need some follow-up, so we gave her a good news Bible. And after that, our paths parted for some months. But uh, after several months, we saw her again at a conference and she was still beaming with joy. And she said to us that her most precious possessions were her good news Bible and her handmade floor spiritual laws. It was probably one of the most dramatic examples I've ever seen of God using apologetics to bring a person to a personal relationship with Christ. 